Welcome to our worship this morning on Sunday, June 28th. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. As part of our worship service this morning, as we have the past two Sundays, we are celebrating Holy Communion together. So I invite you to find some bread or crackers, grape juice or wine, and later on in the service, we'll celebrate Holy Communion together. We begin with our confession and forgiveness. We gather as we live in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. The good news is this. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We join in singing, Beautiful Savior.
Let's join together in praying the prayer of the day. Let us pray. O oh God, you direct our lives by your grace, and your words of justice and mercy reshape the world. Mold us into a people who welcome your word and serve one another. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Good morning, kids. Hope you've had a good week. I was just thinking about uh, some things that have happened. Uh, back when I was a, a, a chaplain in the Air Force, every once in a while we would get a notice that we were going to get a, a visit from the chief of chaplains at, to the base where I would be stationed. Uh, the chief would come from uh, Washington, D.C., where uh, she or he was uh, actually had had their office. And in preparation for that, of course, we, we did some, uh, we got all excited. We would make sure the chapels were, were looking good and cleaned up. And we would want to put what we call our best foot forward, make sure that the chief chaplains understood that we thought that they were, this visit was very special for us. And they would be. Uh, I don't know if you've ever had uh, a, a visit to your house or a visit from someone that you thought was very special. Um, my guess is if you have, uh, you, you may have done things maybe a little bit differently than you normally do. You make sure everything is just right because you want to let them know that you think they're, they're important to you. Well, I want to tell you something you're going to get a visit from a very special person. The most special person. Jesus. Now, it's not going to be a long time coming because I can tell you it'll come today. In fact, Jesus tells us that when we see other people, that he's right there. That, uh, in fact, several places in the Bible and in a few minutes, Pastor Dan is going to be reading a portion of uh, the, the uh, Gospel of Matthew where Jesus actually talks about some of this. And what he tells us is that when we, uh, when we see and when we're with other people, we're actually seeing him, that he's there. Uh, in the very end of the book of Matthew, he tells us in the 25th chapter that it's how we treat other people is how we treat him. He says, when I was hungry, you fed me. When I was naked, you clothed me. When I was in prison, you visited me. When I was sick, you took care of me. And his, his followers asked, well, when did you do? We, we don't remember doing that. And he said, well, and when you did it to the, to the least, to the, to the smallest, to people who couldn't help themselves, you did it to me. He's not just saying that it's like we're doing things to him as we, as we uh, treat other people, but it's actually him. That in ways we don't understand, he is right there in the middle of everything we do. And so I think it's important that we keep that in mind. That truth is, the most important one of all is always right there. And how we treat our friends, our neighbors, people we don't like, is how we're treating Jesus. Have a good week, kids. God bless you. The Holy Gospel for this Sunday is taken from the book of Matthew, the 10th chapter, verses 40 through 42. Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward, and whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the, of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple 
Truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. This is the Gospel of the Lord. When I was uh, in eighth grade, I had the privilege of taking a trip to Japan for a few weeks as uh, a part of, uh, I guess you'd call it a, a micro exchange program. Uh, earlier in the year, my family had been uh, one that hosted one of several Japanese students for a few weeks. And so now I had the opportunity to travel to Japan with a group of American students for a brief stint. I will say it was a, uh, a very fun trip. Uh, and I will say that for the most part, we American students behaved uh, very well. That being said, there were a, a few occasions when uh, you know, a few of us 14-year-old boys acted like, well, 14-year-old boys. Uh, and, and when this happened, we uh, deservedly received a talking to by one of the American adults who came along with our group. This man uh, reminded us that while we were on this trip, we were not just uh, representing ourselves, but we were representing the whole group. We were representing our schools, and we were, in fact, representing our country. And, you know, I, I think back on this now, and uh, what I have to say about it is, I think our country probably could have picked some better representatives. Again, in the swing of things, our behavior was really not that bad. It was more of a case of, you know, talking loudly amongst ourselves when we should have been quietly listening, stuff like that. Still, though, if you're going to send a group of representatives from your culture to another, who in their right mind sends a group of 14-year-olds? It's not like they're inherently bad. It's just that they're an unstable element. You know, they, they, uh, they're a, a program that's still very much in its developmental stages. They are not what you want to display to the public at large. Representation matters. How many times have you had a bad customer service experience and thought to yourself, you know, if this is how this company is representing itself, then I don't want to be doing business with this company anymore. Well now, think to yourself, what if a company had only 14-year-olds to fulfill their customer service needs. Terrifying thought, isn't it? It sort of reminds me of something that I used to think about back when I lived in Germany, when I was, you know, 19, 20 years old. All over this world of ours, uh, our country has military bases. And for many of the people who live in other countries uh, that live near these bases, the soldiers that they meet from these American military bases are the first real live Americans that they come into contact with. You know, these soldiers, these young soldiers are sort of their first glance at America in real life. A little about uh, the soldiers that are stationed at these bases. Uh, many of them are 18, 19, 20 years old. About, you know, the same age as young people who first go off to college. Not as unstable as a 14-year-old, but certainly not a completed product by any means. And as an added bonus... 
being that they're overseas, these young people who are representing our country are now legally able to buy alcohol. So, if you were to look at all this data, put it together, uh, you might think to yourself, this is not a wonderful idea. That people the world over might first get to know us through an 18-year-old who just bought his first bottle of vodka could be utterly disastrous. You look at that recipe and you think to yourself, surely we should have been involved in many more wars than we have. And indeed, while there certainly have been some slip-ups, as even our young soldiers are human, I can tell you that by and large, things have gone okay. By the grace of God and their first sergeants, things largely work out. It can be a difficult burden to be a representative, to be the embodiment of a whole people or an idea. Now, in today's gospel text, Jesus tells us, whoever welcomes you welcomes me. Whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. Whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. Jesus is talking here about hospitality, how someone should be received. He is also talking about how when we go to someone and they welcome us, they are welcoming him and God. And that means that we are representatives of him. That he is inside us. That he is with us. My first reaction to that is that God needs to work on his selection process because we are not the ones that you want representing him. It's a bad idea. We are not to be trusted with this responsibility. Just look at our track record. It's not good. I mean, if you took a look through the Old Testament, it's pretty much just a record, a blow-by-blow blow of God telling us to do things and then us not doing them. And then you move on to the New Testament, and God comes to us in the person of Jesus. And we listen to him for a little bit, and then we kill him. And we are the ones that he wants delivering his message. We are the ones who turn our backs on him, who betray him and then kill him. We are the ones that he wants to be his representatives. We're to go to people and talk about him. We are to put ourselves in the position that we be welcomed by our neighbors. And that we are also to welcome our neighbors in. We are always to love the Lord our God and we are to love our neighbors. So I say again, are we really the best choice? I mean, does that make any sense? Surely he could have found better representation. Make no mistake, we've had this charge, this mission, for a few thousand years now. And to put it mildly, we've had a few missteps. We've not been welcoming to our neighbors. We've declined to take the word of God out to the world and allow ourselves to be welcomed by them. When we have gone out, we have often gone with a message of our own rather than with the gospel of Christ Jesus. 
We've used scripture as a weapon against our neighbors. And we have proven ourselves over and over again not to be qualified representatives of this one. Still, though, God defies all reason, and he keeps sending us out there. While we sometimes struggle to have faith in him, he does a truly radical thing, and he has faith in us to be the ones that he uses to spread his word. Whoever welcomes you, welcomes him. That's a lot of responsibility. But more than that, it's also a sign of his love for us. Through his command to go and spread the gospel, he teaches us to love one another. By recruiting the uh, highly imperfect to spread his message, he has guaranteed that those who have sinned against each other, those who have hurt each other, must welcome each other. This is the path to forgiveness. We who have hurt all around us cannot welcome in our God without welcoming in those that we have hurt and those who have hurt us. So who knows? Maybe we are the perfect representatives for Christ, the one who died to forgive and welcome all of us in. Amen. Let us build a house.
place where hands will reach beyond the wood and stone to heal and strengthen, serve and teach and live the word they've known. Hear the outcast and the stranger, bear the image of God's face. Let us bring an end to fear and danger. All are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome in this place. With the whole church, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Called into unity with one another and the whole creation, let us pray for our shared world. God of companionship, encourage our relationships with our sisters and brothers in Christ. Bless our conversations, shape our shared future, and give us hearts eager to join in shouts of praise. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of abundance, you make your creation thrive and grow to provide for all that we need. Inspire us to care for our environment and be attuned to where the earth is crying out. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of mercy, your grace is poured out on for all. Inspire authorities, judges, and politicians to act with compassion. Teach us, Lord Jesus, to overcome fear with hope, meet hate with love, and welcome one another as we would welcome you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all care, accompany all who are in deepest need. Comfort those who are sick, especially those diagnosed with COVID-19, as well as the lonely and the hurting. We lift before your throne of grace this morning, Marlene Helling, Rory Hamry, Dan Kemper, Dion Rasmussen, Julie Morales, Roger Feld, Bob Norland, Percy Miranda, Roger Hansen, Sheila Olson, Butch Olson, Corey Mosier, Jean Burhau, Jeff Larson's son, Matt, Kari Morvig, Karen Bush, Sandra Jensen, Gaida Gullickson, Sylvia Rasmussen, Alan Torpet, Jim Larson, Gary Werner, Celia Gertzen, Caroline Erickson, and those that we name in our hearts. Renew the spirits of all who call upon you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of community, we give thanks for these congregations and our parish. Give us passion to embrace your mission and the vision to recognize where you are leading us. Teach us how to live more faithfully with each other. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of love, you gather into your embrace all who have died. Comfort all who are grieving, including the family and friends of Bev Drellick. Keep us steadfast in our faith and renew our trust in your promise. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive these prayers, O God, and those too deep for words. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ and his precious blood strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Go in peace. Amen.
Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me. Let us pray. God of the welcome table, in this meal we have feasted on your goodness, and we have been united by your presence among us. Empower us to go forth sustained by these gifts, so that we may share your neighborly love with all. Through Jesus Christ, the giver of abundant life. Amen. We want to thank you for the gifts that you have mailed in or given online to the five congregations in our parish, Concordia, Faubourg, Maple Lake, Little Norway, and Trinity. Receive the benediction. As you go on your way, may Christ go with you. May he go before you to show you the way. May he go behind you to encourage you, beside you to befriend you, above you to watch over, and within you to give you peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Spirit. Skies.
cries and sees His hand the wonders wrought This is my Father's world The birds their carols raise The morning light the lily white Declare their Maker's praise This is my Father's world He shines in all that's fair In the rustling grass I hear Him pass He speaks to me everywhere Yeah.